Alright, welcome back. So here we are, we're in the third video for module 13. And I suspect this will likely be the last video. Now, in this video, I want to talk about things that we've done. Conceptually, things that we've done and apply them. Let's start off with this single block of code. And we'll walk through it line by line. This first line, we define a class called MyCalcs. And in it is this function. We can call it a method if we want. And this class doesn't need an init. It, there's a lot of things it doesn't need because for whatever reason, this class I only created it to do work. It's not a traditional class like a pet, a dog, a cat, a horse, any, whatever it may be. And with this one, I can create an instance of my calcs that inherits whatever functionality is associated with it. And I'm not limited to just this one function, I can create more functions in here and cause this class to do a whole lot more work than it currently does. Just want to try and keep this as simple as we can for this example. Now with that said, we've got this class. I'm going to import C profile. I did it up above, so I didn't technically have to do it again, but I did it just as a good housekeeping process. Now, traditionally, if I'm dealing with notebooks, I like to do all my imports at the beginning of the notebook. But, in a lot of these videos and the way I've had these notebooks set up, I've preferred to have the imports local and not up at the top. So I wanted you to see the imports take place when we needed to use them. Not a one and done. So yeah, well here, here's a list of them and we'll use them here, there, everywhere. Well, it, doesn't, it doesn't sink in as well that way. So with this, we're importing C profile. We just used it up above in the previous video. Check, see if there's a main. And if there is, we're gonna go ahead and do these things. And what is it we're gonna do? Well, in this first line, we've got an input statement. We're calling the input method. We prompt the user. The user does something. They hit the keys on the keyboard, and when they hit enter, it passes the re results as a return value back to where this method was called we then pass it to the int method, and the int method takes whatever we pass to it and converts it to an integer, if it can. Now, one of the things I've done down below here is I use the try and accept. What would happen if what they entered could not be converted to an integer? String error, or a con conversion error. I'd end up with an error when it comes to the data type, trying to typecast it, and it shut me down. So I could do a try except here to catch any errors. And then if the user messed up, hey, give me an actual number so I can have a loop there to perform that task. Number two, I'm bringing the second number. And then once I've captured the inputs from the user, then I want to start tracking what's taking place performance-wise. So I create an instance of C profile. I'll call it prof. I enable it, meaning let's turn that thing on. Let's start listening and keeping track of everything. I instantiate my calcs. That's that thing up here. 
So I create an instance of it and I call it calc here. Now once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and use that calc here. I'm going to use that calc here and I'm going to call or invoke the one method that's in it and pass it the two values that I got from the user. And I'm going to take whatever that thing gives me and I'm going to store it in result. That's what I'm going to try. And then from there, I'm going to say, you know what? If this thing doesn't work, if it gives me a zero division error, tell me. It's a zero division error. If it doesn't, if we're all good, then do this. The result of your entries is, and then convert whatever the result is to a string. Print it out there. And then finally, I'm going to print out a statement that says, we're all done here. Prof.disable. Meaning, we're done keeping track of the efficiencies and how long it takes to do things. So, with that said, let's create an instance or create the class. Start this thing. We created an instance of it. It says enter the first number, 25. Second number, 0. It had a problem. No, it didn't have a problem. It said I was all good. And it really shouldn't have. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to come up to my runtime. And I want to disconnect and delete my runtime. Because this should not have run without an error. It should have. So you can't divide by zero. We got a problem here. Right. Come back up. I just shut down my connection to Colab. And now I'm going to start up with fresh memory. I'm not using any existing resources. It's all brand new. Since it's all brand new, I'm kind of glad that I've got the C profile there. So go ahead and run that. Let me run this again. Let's say 25, 0. It's letting it go through, and it should not be letting it go through. Because it's a division by 0. And it was throwing an error earlier, but I'm not sure what I've changed or what I've modified. Conceptually, I don't want to spend my time or your time that we've got for this video in debugging this. Conceptually, this should all work. I may have a small typo in there. But that's what should be taking place. It should be throwing me this error right here. It's a division by zero. Um, Not sure why it's doing that. Let's come down and look at the stats real quick. And here's the stats for it. It did not take that long to run compared to how long it took to run whatever we ran up above. Now, that's the extent of what I wanted to go over with this. It was just a quick rehash on things and seeing how so many of the things that we've done may have seemed huge at the time, but when we start plugging them in together, wow, these little things really add up. And there's a lot of functionality we have associated with what we've covered. When it comes to um, saying created notebook five, bring that over and talk about some things in here. So, what we're doing in this notebook, there's only three tasks. 
the first one. I'm going to create a class for pets. So it's going to be a pet class. You can call it whatever you want. You're going to create a subclass for different types of pets. We did something similar to this where we had the combination of horse and mule, horse and donkey. It's in a previous module. So there's an example of going about setting those things up. Um, you need to have some attributes associated with that class or the subclass. There needs to be attributes in here. Some descriptor about it. Name, color, what, whatever it may be. You come up with that. Whatever you want it to be. So the parent class, 15 points. Child class is 10 points. Make sure you've got comments and organization in there so I can understand what it is you're doing. Um, include accessors and mutators. Essentially what that means is when you create the instance of the class, give me an opportunity to, or the user an opportunity, to add a name for the pet. Get the name or set the name. It's access or mutator. We've got that in our object-oriented programming module. So in the different modules that we've gone over, you'll have resources available to you. Module 9 will really help you here. Module 10 may help you here as well. We come down to this next one, and this next task, oh, let me back up. Use a main method. You just did that previously. Let's use that conditional. Easy peasy five points. So in the second task, I want you to go to the Kaggle website. Remember the place where you were able to go get those bonus points for going through that Kaggle certification module. Didn't take long to go through it. And you ended up walking away with a Python programming certificate and bonus points in this class. The same place, Kaggle. You can click on this link, open a new tab. Let's look at it. This is where that tab will take you. What kind of data sets do you want to look at? There's a bunch of data sets. See what they are, they're CSVs. Okay. You can go to those data sets and you can access or download the data site. Right there. Download. So this is a 13 loop treasury bill CSV. You can download it. go in and it'll tell you different things about it in here. Different information about the data set. There's other data sets. But with that said, go pick a, pick a data set. Any data set. Doesn't matter which one. It really doesn't. Unless there's one aspect that we'll talk about here in a second. Maybe a minute or two. When it comes to the data sets, if you know what you're going to do with it, it may help you to think about what you're going to pick. So you're going to download that data set, and you're, you're going to save it to your Google Drive. So you can, if you got it set up like that way, you can download the file right into your Google Drive. I can do that the way I've got mine set up. Um, or I go to my OneDrive and then I 
upload it to my Google Drive from there. You need to set the sharing permissions the same way that you've done on your notebooks because you're going to have to create a connection to that data set. That's all stuff that I've done in previous modules. But I used a data set that I had downloaded and shared the exact same way. It's a CSV. I'm giving you the code already how to connect that CSV. I've done it in more than one module. So we did it most recently in module 12. So with that said, you're going to create a connection to the data set and the code block that I've got here. So do whatever imports you need, connect to the data in this cell right here. And then from there, you're going to store that data in a data frame. So whatever you get from that data set, you save it in a data frame. In here. The next thing you need to do is display info about the data frame and also display, it's not the same, it's maybe under the same task, but they are two separate distinct things you need to do. It's essentially five points for each. Info and the first eight rows. So there's a line of code for info, there's a line of code for the first eight rows. As a default setting will give you 10 rows, but if you put an eight in the parentheses, it'll only give you eight. There's 10 points. If the data set is not fully cleaned or wrangled, then perform at least two of the strategies used in module 11 to address it. There's 20 points possible when it comes to this. You don't have to do it because there's 20 points bonus in here. It's right there, potentially. So with that said, when you pick a data set, think about the things that we talked about in module 11 to address cleaning and wrangling data a number of things. We addressed missing data. We converted data from words to numbers. Instead of male, female, it was zero, one. And in that module, in module 11, I walked through how to do it. So a great example in module 11 on how to do this. So at least two strategies could be the same strategy twice. And there's the three spaces. If you need more, just put focus in there, click code, and it'll give you a new code box. The third task is worth 25 points. There is no right or wrong answer. You get credit here just for trying. And what I want you to do is one of two options. The first one, let me spell this correctly. Using the data frame from task two above. That's that one up here. The data you got from cable. Display some chart or graph about the data derived from the data set. That's missing there. It's not there. Okay. Now, if we went back and looked here, there's not a, there's not code associated with this one. Let me back up and reset ones or trending ones. Uh, all data sets. Well, let's look at 
Ooh, that hit Beatty's data set. There's a lot of code. I can download the data set here, but people have already written code about it. If I want to see their code, hang on. What it is we're looking at, I can click on somebody's code, and here's it's going to pull up. A link here to their GitHub. Let's link to their. That's not what I wanted. I don't want their resume. Make their code. Here we go. Here's an example where somebody's gone through. Here's their code. They went through, they brought it in. They stored it in a data set. It's actually, a, uh, this is just a data set. It's not a data frame. But they're treating it as a data frame and seeing code you would run to get the top five. We've got it there. And we can go down and look and see, did they do anything? And they didn't. They didn't display any graphics associated with it. But when you're going and looking, look and see if somebody's gone through and they've got some graphics associated with what they've done. Ah, there's graphics. What was it I said I was looking for? Some chart or graph about the data. Not that, not that guy. This one. So somebody's gone through and here is a chart about glucose and diabetes. They went through, looked to see if there was any non-nulls. So there's 768 entries that are not empty. There's stuff there. What's the data type about? What's there? There's different info about that data frame. Hmm. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? So somebody's gone through, and this is not a ton of work here when it comes to putting in, and I have no problem with you copying the contents of the cell, contents of the cell, just put a link, put a hyperlink in your notebook saying this is where I got my code. And that's as simple as text, hyperlink, my code or code that I used source of the code, whatever it may be. Okay. So that's the first option. The second option, so Python has the ability for you to create GUIs and graphics and pretty things, not just this ugly code that we've been dealing with. And I've got you a couple of links here to different things. One is tkinter, the other is Turo. This one's the GUI, and this one's graphics, drawing, using Python programming. Whatever you want to do. Go, you can find a demo and then actually create the code to do your own, whatever it is, that demo, or modify it towards something you want, whatever. Use either one in some kind of code to do something. This is just, go play with it. See what you can find, see what you can do with it. This one, take what you've been doing and dig deeper. 
So when I said, depending on what data set you pick, think about the things you're going to have to do with it when you pick it. So if it's going to be easy to do some cleaning and wrangling, easy to go ahead and spit out some graphics, and that's the one I want to pick. Module 11, great resource for this. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. And if you got any questions, concerns, whatever, I've got discussion in the module for this created notebook. Or shoot me an email or reach out to the others in uh, the WhatsApp. All right. Talk to you soon.